when I'm constantly getting these messages that basically what they're saying is that I don't think black women are pretty. I don't think that I value them. I never really thought about them, never even gave them a second thought. No wonder why I struggled with my self-esteem, you know, because I'm sure that they're not the only people that think this about. Welcome to my channel. My name is Heather Louise and today I'm going to talk to you about race. Now, don't be startled. I'm sure that you guys were already aware that this is going to be something that I'm going to talk about if you clicked on this video. But I just wanted to talk about race because I'm honestly tired of pretending that this doesn't affect me at all and has nothing to do with my mental health. It definitely is a source and an answer to why I struggled with my self-esteem. Now, if you guys haven't seen my video on how to improve your self-esteem for black women, then I will link it up above and you can check it out there. But today I'm just going to talk about how structural racism impacts a person's mental health and my experience with it and also just, I guess, a message for hope on how to heal. But I also know that another reason why that it's so uncomfortable for me to talk about in the first place is because not a lot of people care or a lot of people take what I'm saying as somehow reverse racism, um, which is nuts, okay? I believe a major cause of my struggles with low self-esteem is because of racism, especially in my younger years. I wouldn't say too long ago, I just discovered a lot of these fancy terms for how I have been feeling. I just want to share some of those terms with you guys to help you maybe make sense of it all and to give you some sort of definition for how you have been feeling and also to provide a definition for people who may not know what exactly is going on, what this is all about and wants to understand more. I was watching a video on YouTube by Marissa Peer. She described esteem as how much you like yourself. I hold someone in such high esteem, then that means that you really value that person. So, you know, self-esteem is how much you value yourself. I thought it was just best to maybe turn to psychology for answers. A lot of what psychology says is that what you think about yourself or even just like your thoughts create your reality. So, you know, if I'm constantly thinking, okay, nobody likes me, then I'm doing it to myself. And I honestly went to a therapist in the past who basically said the same thing to me, like, you know, this is a you problem. You know, you are creating your reality here. You need to change your thoughts and miraculously your life will change. She would question me and just be like, are you really sure? Could there be a possible explanation to why you might feel the way that you do? And you know, now there's this new fancy term for it called gaslighting. So that happens a lot when you know, you're trying to seek help and you have, you go to a therapist that doesn't know anything that you're talking about. Now, I think that there's something to that and I don't want to be dismissive of that at all because I do think that is something important and that's something that I maybe should take a closer look at and if you maybe have the same narrative for yourself then you need to also take responsibility for some of your actions. However, I do think it is a little bit easier said than done for some people, particularly in my case because I can only speak for myself is that okay, if this is true, let me change my actions. Let me put myself out there more. Let me be involved in more groups. Let me try to make the first move and see, is it me or do people really not like me? And a lot of these people that I were reaching out to or putting myself to be around were people who were not like me. And I don't want to say that no one likes black people or every black person has the same experience as me because that's not true. Maybe you relate to me, maybe you don't. I wasn't what a lot of people expected me to be. I just felt like I continuously disappointed people. If a friend asked me about like a hip hop song or if they were to ask me about some stereotypical black cultural thing that they thought that I would know something about and I didn't know it, they would just kind of look at me like, 
okay? Like, I don't get you, I don't understand you. I'm sure it just made them really uncomfortable because maybe they haven't met someone like me before or, you know, I'm sure they have a very limited view about people who are like me. And I just feel like it might have been coming from a genuine place where they're trying to relate to me. But when I was basically making them uncomfortable by saying, I don't know anything that you're talking about, I'm sure it made them say, okay, well, this person makes me uncomfortable. I don't really know why because I'm unconsciously trying to relate to her by saying all these black stereotypes and just, you know, missing the mark here. And I don't want to hang out with someone who makes me uncomfortable anymore. So I really felt like I wasn't accepted. So going back to the whole psychology thing of like, you know, my actions are shaping my reality, it just didn't sit right with me. Because no matter how much I try, no matter how much I try to put myself out there to test, is this really true? Everything just kept getting backfired in my face. A good term for why this might be happening is structural racism. So structural racism is a formalization of a set of institutional, historical, cultural, and interpersonal practices within a society that more often than not puts one social or ethnic group in a better position to succeed and at the same time disadvantages other groups in a consistent and constant manner that disparities develop between the groups over a period of time. But this is really validating that there are so many things that are just put in place to work against me then honestly that's just really defeating that I have to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis and it would make it difficult to put myself in a high regard and value myself when you know the world is just telling me that you're not valuable so a couple of the terms that i want to talk about that are under the umbrella term for structural racism is microaggressions and racial bias so let's just begin with microaggressions and what it is. So a microaggression is an everyday verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights, snubs, or insults, whether intentional or unintentional, which communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative messages to target persons based solely upon their marginalized group membership. And I just love that they talk about things that are intentional and unintentional because a lot of times, you know, people apologize for when they don't mean to offend that person and they just say okay i'm sorry it was unintentional that's great that you apologize and i accept your apology but it still hurts and i feel like i had a lot of that in my life like i said i grew up in a predominantly white area so a lot of my potential suitors were with white men a common thing that was said to me when i was dating would say something along the lines of like you are pretty for a black girl or they would say you know you are the first black girl that i am interested in as that was a compliment it wasn't their intent to hurt me they were genuinely trying to give me a compliment. When I'm constantly getting these messages that basically what they're saying is that I don't think black women are pretty. I don't think that I value them. I never really thought about them, never even gave them a second thought. No wonder why I struggled with my self-esteem, you know, because I'm sure that they're not the only people that think this and I internalize them and I thought that about myself. Because I'm black, I must not be pretty or good enough as other women. I do need to now take responsibility and seek out those people who do find me valuable, who do find me attractive. And also even just with, you know, social media, this is so important. Like I mentioned earlier about how I'm just see receiving all these messages about, okay, black people aren't valuable, you know, black people are getting killed for no reason, I need to set some boundaries and I need to set some limits with that. And then I need to give myself opportunity to heal. So the second example that I talked about is racial bias. It's a form of implicit bias, which refers to the attitudes or stereotypes that affect an individual's understanding, actions, and decisions in an unconscious manner. They are often activated involuntarily and without the awareness or intentional control of the individual. Another thing that they mentioned is that a lot of it is unintentional. A lot of people don't know 
that they're doing it, which is a huge problem. But my personal example for this one, and I have so many, and I'm sure that you guys have a lot, so if you guys have any examples, please feel free to leave them down in the comments and let me know. Growing up, I felt that my teachers thought that I was a bad kid. I just felt that they looked at me and they said, okay, because you were black, because you're a black kid, you're up to no good, you're sneaky, like you're gonna be a bad student and you're dumb. For my teachers to think this about me, it really stuck with me and honestly, because they thought this about me, a lot of those things I internalized and I thought were true. So I kind of behaved the way that they expected me to behave. I struggled in school. I really didn't get the best grade. I remember putting it to the test when I did go to college. I felt like I couldn't try because I was struggling so deeply with my mental health issues. And so when I decide, decided to go to see a counselor, started to play tennis, um, things started to look better for me. So I took that and I ran with it. I realized, no, I'm not dumb. I'm not what you know people think of me. You don't have to go along with what anyone thinks about you. And it's hard, it's hard to get there and it's hard to not just prove them wrong but also prove it to yourself that you are not what people say. So the bigger question is how do we heal from structural racism? I listened to the Blinkist version of Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I understand how she's feeling. It is so tiring talking about race like in general. Um, I feel like I'm exhausted from talking about this and doing this video, but like I understand what she's saying. It's difficult to talk to white people about race. I just feel like I get this like blank stare. No one really wants to acknowledge their part in structural racism and why this exists. And I think that that's the problem. That's something that Rennie mentioned in her book is that, you know, in order to heal structural racism, white people need to have conversations about race. They need to start getting comfortable about talking about race. It's really important for people, like especially celebrities, to post it on social media, like, oh, here is this racial injustice, like seek justice for that person and like make it almost like a trending thing. While that does get people's attention about race, I think it needs to start even just like at square one like dial it back a little bit start talking about race to your friends your family i'm sure a lot of white people know that one friend or have that one family member that is honestly you know that they're racist they said racist things why aren't you talking to them about race why aren't you saying to them hey cut that out and if they don't cut that out cut them out that's where it starts it is really healing to just talk about this. Even doing this video, even though I know some people might feel uncomfortable or take offense to it, I know that I'm not alone in this and I know that it is my responsibility to heal myself at this point because, you know, like I mentioned before in previous videos that a lot of psychology practices, techniques, theories are not for black people, unfortunately. So I feel like I have to do my research for myself. I hope you got some clarity about how racism can impact a person's mental health, in my case, my self-esteem, and how we can heal from that is by just having these conversations, feeling all the discomfort and talking about racial issues. Talking about it is so important and so healing. I hope that I encourage some of you to start doing that. So if you like this content, please subscribe. I create videos on all things related to mental health. So if you like that sort of content, I post weekly and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.